am I? <laughs> <laughs> By doing this challenge trip, we're going to have to do something we don't normally do. And we're going to, okay, how do we start? What are we going <laughs> Hey, Dolly. Dolly? <laughs> are you in charge? Say, action. Yeah. On our way to get some fuel. How much per litre are we going to have to spend? Is it going to have to come out of the money? Yeah, it's going to have to come out of the money. We've got quarter of a tank left, so um, it's going to be three quarters, we'll fill it up. to do is take the 90 98 pounds 11 off our grand total of 2500 ouch um obviously that should get us over to france belgium okay and uh we'll get a few miles out of it so the tank is full filled it till it uh, stopped have a look at our new total so what have we done today well we've done quite a few things just to get ourselves ready to go <laughs> um, as you probably saw, we've uh, packed some of the van, uh, we fueled up, so we're going to have to use some of our budget for that. Yep, budget wise, but then again, it was what, 154.9, so good price. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. We got the back box on. Yep. That's been secured on the bike rack. Yep, so we filled that up and got a few bits and bobs in there. Um, I think what we've discovered is that we're going to have to be a bit more organised, aren't we? Yeah, more organised. There's no point going to the expensive countries like Switzerland, uh, south of France, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I think what we're going to have to do, um, yeah. we've sat down and we've actually worked out a rough route uh, of where we want to end up in the end. So we're looking at going to end up in Greece, but let's just see which way the wind takes us in terms of stale plats, airs and so forth because we really want to stop where it's minimal cost so we won't be stopping at campsites and you know spending fees there are going to be times when we need to um, dock for services and so forth but again where we're traveling to most places have all that stuff for free hopefully yeah as Paul just said we we're looking for the first couple of nights uh, we're looking at Belgium we've always wanted to see the last post um, so there you go, that's something you can do for free and uh, we've looked at some free park-ups in Ypres. Then after we've done that we're going to head off to Ghent. The important thing to remember about Ghent, it's a low emission zone. So last week I applied for permission to take the van in for the low emission zone. Uh, very easy, all done online on the Belgian government website and what it means is that number plate recognition is going to pick us up uh, but we already have permission and I've given them all the details so it's quite nice for a change to have um, a low emission zone with no charge. So rough route, uh, we've sat and we've planned it out, rough guide of where we're going to go, we're going to enter in France, head to Belgium, down through Germany, into the Czech Republic, hopefully visit Prague, then I think after that it's Slovakia, then Hungary, then Bulgaria, then Romania, then Greece. Does that sound right, Pip? We're good? That, that's from memory. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, I've sat and worked it out and how much roughly it would cost us and I think to do all the way down to Greece and back is going to take about a thousand pounds of our budget. 
so we've already just spent a hundred on diesel so we've got 900 left to get down to Greece and back. Ooh, that sounds like a lot, doesn't it? But that includes fuel, taxes, tolls, and everything else on top, doesn't it? And it's 900 over a period of almost three months. Yeah, and we're not going to be rushing it. So what do you think we've got left to do? Food shopping? For the stuff we're able to take, just the set, you know, the pastas, the rices, and so forth that yeah, are going to last. Yeah. Not that we can't get it where we're going, but it's just nice to just be prepared. Just have some. Yep, because some things may be shut by the time we get there. Plus, there's also Easter coming. Yep. So we don't want to get caught out there. A couple more microfiber towels because we found out last time that that was the thing that we were running out of, and we are going to be better at the laundrette this time because last time we left it three weeks between washes and ended up hauling a bin bag into a laundrette <laughs> and using three machines and two dryers so yeah we don't want to do that again. I've downloaded movies and TV shows ready on the uh, on the hard drive so we can run that through the Arthitex TV. Yep and we've loaded up our Revolut card so this is very good for taking traveling when you go into multiple countries we don't pay for the monthly fee um, we just have the one where you can transfer up to a thousand pounds a month into different currencies while well, considering our very tight budget that's more than going to work um, and you can take I think up to 200 pounds a month out of the cash point so that works really well and the best thing about it is it's got a really good app that we can keep track of all our spending so we'll be able to make sure we're keeping right within that budget that we've set and Pippa is super excited oh god look at her She's raring to go. Mind you, Dolly's just about the same. <laughs>just on the final days of getting everything sorted and we just wanted to add a couple of little things that can often be overlooked house insurance we're fortunate or unfortunate enough just whichever way you want to look at it two out of our three sons are back home now living with us so we're able to leave it in the house is constantly occupied most insurance companies will allow you up to 30 days possibly 60 days without anybody being there but after that your, your house may well be uh, uninsured so it's worth just checking with your insurer as to how long you can leave it unoccupied uh, one of the other questions we've had is data what are we going to be doing for data well we've got an ee contract that gives us 50 gigabytes of fair use data per month in the EU. So uh, we'll use that. Um, that renews every month. And we also each have a contract and that we can use the data on that. So we do have data. Uh, we'll try and save it where we can, uploading videos in places with Wi-Fi. Soon realised was that you can eat your data very quickly. For example, if you've got an iPhone and you take a photograph, it'll upload it to the cloud. It'll synchronise with your other devices. And before you know it, you put in hundreds of megabytes worth of photographs in to the cloud yeah so just remember to turn off anything that sinks and so forth because do it when it's free um people have asked if our budget includes the dog's animal health certificates uh it doesn't they have passports you can check out our video on how to get your dog an eu passport i'll put the link up there ferry was actually booked with tesco vouchers so that doesn't come into our budget either the budget we're talking about is two and a half thousand pounds to now last us 11 weeks we've extended again just a little bit um to travel as far as we can on the two and a half thousand pounds and it's to cover food fuel entrances entertainment bits and bobs and everything in between yeah but the challenge is we're going to try and make it stretch and we're going to do that by staying on airs and freestyle plats wherever we can um, we are going to budget carefully on our food we won't be eating out all the time although we will be eating out but we're going to show you how you can make your budget stretch 
um, and fuel, well, we're kind of stuck with that. But what we've decided to do is go in a direction where the fuel is a little bit cheaper. Coming. Power banks, we've, so, got, we've actually got quite a collection of these, haven't we? We've got all of them together and we'll charge them before we go. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, we will at some point have to uh, stop. The other thing that we've done is on our phones and iPads, we've put some apps on that are of great benefit to us. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at things like Park for Night, Search for site, iOverlander and Camper Connect. So that's all apps where you can check out and see where you are and where there is somewhere that you can perhaps stay for free or a very low price. So that's been really valuable to us in the past. And I think on this trip, it's going to be even more valuable. I think, uh, what's the name of that app where you can locate the cheapest fuel in the area? Oh, that's uh, via Michelin. Yeah, that was uh, good, That it? only tends to work in France, though. But I think there is another app where you can check out where um, where you are, fuel stations and the price, so that we will always try and go to the cheapest fuel station. Um, there is also, if you put into Google um, fuel prices in Europe, it will come up with a list of current fuel prices on average in each country. We're going across on the ferry and we're going to be going into the doggy lounge, mm. which means they can come with us. So again, what we'll do is once we're able to put out more interesting footage than just us two rabbiting on, <laughs> we'll be able to show you what it's like in the doggy lounge. But the other thing is to remember when you get to the other side, certain countries will require tighter testing. Right. Tighter testing is the thing that has tripped us up a little bit on this trip because we had all sorts of fantastic plans of where we might go and then realised that some of these countries weren't in the EU. Now, the problem with that is that you can take your dog into these countries, and by that I'm talking about Turkey, uh, Serbia, Montenegro, Albania. Um, you can take your dog in, not a problem. But there is a chance if you try to take it out again, they have to have a tighter test to show the level of antibodies in their blood for rabies. This has to be done, I believe, three months before you attempt yeah, to leave months. the country. Yep. It, Google it. It's worth a Google. I think it's on the DEFRA website. Um, but really, it has. we've just decided not to even risk travelling into these countries. We didn't do the tighter test. We left it too late. And uh, we will be sticking to EU countries. Uh, low emission zones, another thing you've really got to think quite carefully about. Uh, before you go anywhere near a city, I would always recommend check the internet, check the low emission zones, what what the rules are surrounding that city because it is all too easy to get filtered into a city and before you know it, you're in and you're being fined. It's an electronic fine. But yeah. again, you know, we've, we've covered it before with the Crit Air, uh, the German emission zones yeah. and registering online. So it's important that you do that. Yeah, but Ghent nearly tripped us up because we were going to go to Ghent and it was only when I was Googling, I realized that it's a low emission zone and you have to apply beforehand, otherwise you'll get fined. Um, so we did, and that's fine. But I'm sure there's probably other countries like that or other cities like that. So be careful. If you go in near a city, always check for low emission zones because they really are, they're creeping in and in now and there's so many of them. So be careful. You don't want a fine. That would take a lot of our budget. Mm, don't want any of that. No. I think that is it. I think we are getting very close. Like I've said, we are extremely close to going now. We've uh, shifted the ferry a little bit closer. Yeah. When Tesco Club Card allowed you to use vouchers at three times their value, mm. they have now gone to or are going down to only twice the value. Yeah. So if you have Tesco vouchers, cash them in now to get the vouchers for your ferries or your Euro tunnel because they are going down to twice the face value um, of the of the voucher and that that's a fairly big loss so I believe if you cash them in now which we have done you've got a year to use them so uh, go do that now don't waste any time go do it uh, we're keeping an eye on the weather I've got an app that does very good weather forecasting the Ventusky app and it's actually very good, but that gives us very good and quite accurate weather reporting. Um, it looks like when we enter um, Belgium and Germany, uh, we might be faced with a little snow. So we're having to pack everything. 
Yep. Winter clothes, spring clothes, um, some summer clothes. So, uh, yeah, we're covered. We've got the lot. Not like last time where we... Um, Didn't take shorts. I convinced them all that uh, we were going in September and it was going to be autumn and it was going to be cold and we ended up boiling and we'd taken no summer clothes at all. So that was a bit stupid. Stupid. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't very good. Take it up.